everyone, Shadow Wraith back again, this time not with a specific build video, but more of a guide on what goes through my head when I'm getting ready to jump into master level content and how that reflects the build that I plan to run. So ideally, this will take you through that thought process and then you can take build videos that other people have posted and tweak those based on the Nightfall Strike or whatever other master level content you're going into. And then in the background, I'll have some gameplay of myself and some friends running through a 1080 master level Lake of Shadows Nightfall. I'll also put all of this information down in the description below, so check there, don't worry about taking notes. So we'll start with subclasses. These are the ones that I would recommend. They're by no means the only ones you should run, um, but for Warlocks, I'd recommend either top or bottom tree void. They have a great grenade, they have rift for healing, and high DPS supers. Uh, or middle tree solar well of radiance. You'll also have healing grenades and a rift, so those are those are probably the top three warlock choices for me. Um, on Titan, I would do top tree void for the bubble Titan. Um, that's really helpful for the 35% damage buff, panicking and dropping a bubble to keep yourself alive. Um, and if it's a boss that you can use swords on, you can bubble and then have your fire team group up and just sword the boss down. And then when it comes to hunter, my favorite is definitely Bottom Tree Void because you can make yourself and your teammates invisible. You can chain grenades and smoke bombs back and forth because of the, uh, the tree perks. And you can do infinite invisibility, um, which I explained in one of my other videos. You could also do Top Tree Void, but I prefer the invisibility on Bottom Tree Void. Um, and then again, like this is just my personal preference. If you have other subclasses that you really enjoy running and you have great builds with those, hey, go for it. And would love to hear about those because these are the ones that I've mainly stuck to. So let me know in the comments if you have uh, better options that you enjoy. The first things you'll want to consider are what are the champion types and what are the shield types you're going to be facing? And then what are the boss fight mechanics? And then you'll want to work with your fire team to make sure all of your builds synergize around that. So a couple overall tips. You want to try to double up on the anti-champion perks, so two people running anti-barrier, two people running unstoppable, or two people running overload. That way, if one of your team members goes down, you'll still have one other person who can help deal with that particular champion type. Um, ideally, you'll have at least one weapon to cover each shield type, if not two. Two is sometimes uh, not necessary, but definitely make sure you have at least one. And then ideally, you can get someone who's able to revive while invisible, i.e. a Void Hunter. And then you can either have a Warlock with Well of Radiance or a Titan with a Bubble for um, two purposes. One, a Panic Super if they're the last one alive. They can use that to stay alive um, until teammates are able to respawn. Or if the boss is able to be hit with swords, you can drop a Bubble or a Well on the boss as he spawns. And then everybody goes in with a sword and you can generally burn bosses down really, really quickly like that. As for weapons, um, the exotics that most people would be running are Izanagi's Burden for high champion DPS, Ariana's Vow for long range shield pierce, or Divinity for quick overloading. Um, and then you'll want to run a primary with another anti-champion mod if possible. So for example, an unstoppable pulse rifle or hand cannon, or an anti-barrier auto rifle, or an overload sidearm or bow. And then from a heavy standpoint, our team has found the best results using swords for DPS on most bosses, but you could also use a heavy machine gun for shield clearing and ad clearing. Or if you haven't used an exotic in another slot, you could use something like Anarchy or Xenophage for sustained DPS. I would also highly recommend that at least one person on your team run special finisher so that you can keep your special ammo reserves up. This is important for Iznagi, Ariana's Vow, and Divinity. As for synergizing the overall fire team build, some options that work really well are having one person run Divinity, the other two people run Iznagi's Burden. So if you run into an Overload champion, they get hit with Divinity, the other two hit with Iznagi, and generally that'll just about kill the champion depending on your light level. In some of these clips you can see we're below light, so it takes two Iznagi shots and then a little bit of primary to finish off most of the champions. And then it also helps um, if you have a unstoppable champion or an anti-barrier, you hit them with divinity and then two Izanagi shots generally kills them. Beyond that, if you're running into a lot of barriers, you could run double Ariana's Vow and then one person with Izanagi's Burden. So the Ariana's Vows will pop the shield and then the Izanagi will take a shot and do a lot of DPS and then either the champion will die 
or the two Arianas can finish him off. So in the background clips, you can see our fire team is running with two Void Hunters and a Void Bubble Titan. And then we have Oppressive Darkness running on all of our grenades, which is an artifact mod that gives you a 30% debuff. So it's really, really nice. And then we have a Divinity and two Iznagis for quick champion kills. And then as for primaries, we're running one Solar Hand Cannon with Unstoppable. I'm running a Arc Pulse Rifle with Unstoppable, and our other teammate is running an Unstoppable Kinetic Hand Cannon. And then from a heavy perspective, two of us are running Fallen Guillotine, again for quick champion and boss damage. And then our other one is running a Solar Heavy Machine Gun for shield and quicker ad clearing. So that's it for the video. This last clip is what the boss fight should look like since our 1080 boss fight was a little messy. Um, this was an example from a 1050. So thanks all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it.